This is video number 573. Proverbs verse by verse study. Proverbs 2. My favorite golden nuggets from Proverbs 2. It's about time. I would like to go on an Indiana Jones treasure hunt for wisdom. Who would like to join me? Daily, this is my new prayer. Show your wisdom to me. I went on a kabot or God's glory journey for a few years now. And daily, I think, wow, wee, this is just so wow, so holy, so sacred, and so kabot. My most recent kabot moment was, God knows I love music. I was driving with my friend in his car. Cat Stevens was playing in the car. We stopped for lunch. There was a live artist. The first song he sang was one from Cat Stevens. Only God with his kabot personality could have orchestrated this kabot glory moment. Then I embarked on his cruise liner for the treasure hunting style for his love. Now I'm also getting a board of on his train for his wisdom. Indy Hannah Jones style, just like a treasure hunter. I would like to treasure hunt for his wisdom. He keepeth the path of judgment and preserve the way of his saints. Then shalt thou understand righteousness and judgment and equality on every good path. Wisdom is a journey. Spiritual growth is a journey. It is not a Cinderella, fairy godmother, one moment fixes everything kind of happening. No, it is a journey. God told the Israelites that He will transform them little by little. Wisdom is a journey. I have recently heard the story about the Chinese bamboo that when it is planted, it will only grow a few centimeters in the first few years. But in the fifth year, it will grow up to 25 meters. So on a journey, I would like to pray that God will give me daily encouragement, like little breadcrumbs, like the Hansel and Gretel story, leading me on the correct path of wisdom. That is not going to happen as quickly as you want it to happen. A lot of things are going to happen that will catch you off guard. And so therefore, you've got to deal with and handle it as it comes. And not only that, but that faith and patience drives you into action. You've got to keep moving and keep plugging away. In the Far East, they have something that's called the Chinese bamboo tree. The Chinese bamboo tree takes five years to grow. And when they go through a process of growing it, they have to water and fertilize the ground where it is every day. And it doesn't break through the ground until the fifth year, okay? But once it breaks through the ground, within five weeks, it grows 90 feet tall. Now the question is, does it grow 90 feet tall in five weeks or five years? The answer is obvious. It grows 90 feet tall in five years because at any time had that person stopped watering and nurturing and fertilizing that dream that bamboo tree would have died in the ground and i can see people coming out talking to a guy out there watering and fertilizing the ground that's not showing anything hey what you doing you've been out here a long time man and the conversation in the neighborhood is, you growing a Chinese bamboo tree, is that right? Yeah, that's right. Well, uh, even Ray Charles and Stephen Wonder can see ain't nothing showing. <laughs> you know that's how people are gonna do you? So how long have you been working on this? How long have you been working on your dream? It's good. And you have nothing to show. This is all you got to show? People gonna do that to you. And some people, ladies and gentlemen, they stop because they don't see instant results. It doesn't happen quickly. They stop. Oh, no, 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 no. You've got to keep on watering your dream. And when it began to happen, they stopped laughing. They said, look, whoa, look, look here. It's, look at, hey, man, you know, I know you could do it. Look here, you got a job here? <laughs>
When wisdom entereth into thine heart, and knowledge is pleasant unto thy soul. This is our end goal. This is why we embark on this journey of doing the wisdom. First by God revealing the wisdom to us, then entering onto the long and sometimes courteous journey. As one fi fine day the wisdom will abide in us. You will have a piece of this divine wisdom abiding, staying, living inside you. Wisdom is not, not, wisdom will not be anything outside of you. It will not be a goal anymore. It will be you. You will be wisdom. It is metamorphic. It's a butterfly. It's a transformation process. For her house inclineth unto death, and her path un unto death. For the upright shall dwell in the land, and perfect shall remain in it. Does this comparison make any lights go inside in on in your head? Does this sound familiar? This is what Jesus said to you about building your house on the sand versus building your house on the rock. Also, he compares it with foolish or wise deeds. Wisdom is sustainable, it is durable. Foolish is fly by night. I recall this short video I saw about bouncing back. I think and I believe if and when wisdom increases, so then it will be easier for us to bounce back. Give me a bouncy ball. I want to use it in the sermon. I didn't tell her I wanted to use it in the sermon. I said, give me a bouncy ball. I didn't tell her why I wanted it. Maybe she thought I was losing my mind or I hadn't bought Christmas for Holly yet. That'd be bad, wouldn't it? But, but I was thinking that it has the ability to bounce back. That's exactly what it was designed to do. That's exactly what it's meant for. That's why it's called a bouncy ball. They named it appropriately for the function that it is intended to serve, for the potential that it has within its composite structure. But in order, see, if I did the same thing, give me your chair, Rick. I know he doesn't mind giving me his chair. Rick could do anything for me, wouldn't you, Rick? Anything, anything to help me preach the gospel. Even, even your own seat on Christmas Eve. Now look, same ball, different surface, didn't work. Because in order for this to do what it's meant to do, the surface that it bounces on has to be… She's on it. Some of y'all are remedial. It has to be… It has to be… And maybe that's why in this season of your life, Things have been hard. Maybe God isn't punishing you. Maybe he's preparing you. Maybe you've been cut down for a comeback. See, as a believer, y'all better help me preach or I'll have you here until midnight. As a believer in Jesus Christ, you have the ability within you to bounce back. Maybe that's why they laid Jesus in a borrowed grave. Because God had to show the world that you can put me down at rock bottom, but you can't keep me from bouncing back. Does anybody have a bounce back in your spirit this Christmas? The repeat message I receive about chapter 2 from Proverbs is the journey of time, that it takes time. It is This is a repeat message and le lesson that I've learned at nauseum on my spiritual journey. It takes time. God is the ancient of times. He is in control of time. He does not operate on the same rush schedule, 9 to 5 to do less modi operandi than we do. I think this chapter uses several different examples to illustrate it vividly. I have made numerous videos on my journey of time, that it takes time. May God too reveal to you this imperative truth about time.